Well, hello, Patch family. Christina and I are here tonight with Kirk Smith. Smith and uh, Kirk's going to be up uh, in Washington here for a marriage retreat on August 28th. So we thought we'd have a, a quick chat in preparation for that. Uh, just a quick, uh, I don't know, need to know. We had gone uh, through kind of the material that, that Kirk's covering this weekend a couple of years ago, and it was a real blessing for Christina and I. Hi, Kirk. Hey, how's everybody doing in Peoria area today? <laughs> Fantastic, <Okay>. yeah. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for joining us. Hey, I look uh, forward to being with the Patch family. It'll be great to have you. Uh, before we uh, get into a couple of questions here, I'll, I'll uh, lead us in prayer. Yeah. Lord, thank you for your many blessings. We know that we have nothing apart from you. And yet some days we are so forgetful. So we pray that as we um, have a quick chat here and as we prepare our hearts for uh, a weekend to be challenged in our marriages, that we might honor Christ, that we would uh, keep you centered and, and know that uh, uh, we have all that we need in the promises in Christ and that uh, your word is, is sufficient for, for our lives. I'm thankful for, for Kirk and I pray for his family and uh, your continued um, guidance there and uh, for the weekend uh, retreat coming up as well as the uh, get together at the Smith's house uh, this weekend that you would bless all the fellowship. We give you thanks in Jesus' blessed name. Amen. Amen. Can I tell them what it is? Tell them what point. Tell our, tell our oh. patch people when um, the marriage retreat is. Yes. So uh, if you haven't been out to the website, take a look at the, the website, but the marriage retreat is coming up on August 28th. And uh, that will be from 8.30 till 4. And uh, there'll be a, like a light continental breakfast with beverages and, and then lunch. And then uh, we want to encourage you all to make some connections during, the, um, during the, the retreat and maybe go out to dinner with another couple or make it a, a dinner date with your spouse to, to talk about things. <laughs> So that's the that's the details about it. Go out to the to the website to uh, to sign up. Uh, that being said, Kirk, who uh, who should attend the weekend? And and I'll phrase, I'll uh, put a little context around that. When we were up in Chicago uh, for the retreat, there was a couple there who were anticipating marriage. Yes. So who who uh, who should attend the weekend? Well, uh, I love when engaged couples come. Uh, I think a lot don't feel free to for whatever reason. We're very careful. We don't really talk about uh, physical intimacy. And so that would not be a problem for uh, those who are engaged. I would love it if they come because uh, let's face it, most of us who get married, we, the Bible says that the eye is the lamp of the body. And if the eye is light, it brings light to the body. If it's dark, it brings darkness. And most folks uh, apply that as being what we see. But I would suggest how we see our perspective is very important. And if we have a godly and biblical perspective of marriage, which I would contend most people who get married do not have, uh, if they have a godly perspective and an understanding, it will help uh, those early bumps in marriage. That being said, probably the average age since I've been doing this marriage retreat is about 15 or 20 years. It's amazed me, actually, Scott, that uh, so many older people come, and several have come two and three times the very same format. And I think it just helps people see marriage in a biblical perspective uh, that some maybe haven't seen that way before. Yeah, Absolutely. I, I really enjoyed it, and I also enjoyed the, the fellowship. The, the content was great, but it was, it was just a sweet time of fellowship. Yeah, and I think that's one of the greatest things about, especially in-face uh, meetings, you get to meet people. As you just said, uh, we're having about 300 people to our house this weekend. Everybody from Patch is also invited. We've had some folks from Peoria have come before. Um, that that face-to-face, -face, when you spend eight or nine hours together that's like two or three months at church 
And so <laughs> it's so important for us to connect with one another. And this is a great way to do this. Yeah, absolutely. You, uh, you mentioned that we often enter into marriage, even Christians, Christians that are well connected, we enter into mar marriage outside of a biblical view of that. Uh, that didn't happen with us. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you, like, there, uh, recently with the move here uh, from Washington State, so, you know, we, uh, we were just talking about that earlier, but it's been four years since we moved here from Washington State, and the Lord taking and, and repositioning us also shifted my mind. And boy, there's some realities that I had to wake up to uh, about our marriage and about um, things that, that my perspective was just wrong, you know, um, and, and, you know, to not to get too deep into it, but expectations. I realized that I had expectations that even I couldn't live up to, you know, and, and just working through those sort of things. So yeah. what and what was it? What was the what was the kind of the biggest shocker for you when you were first married or yeah. <laughs> coming into your married? Well, I was 28 before I got married and I started pastoring at 23. So I was still single. Uh, and ironically, I did a ton of marriage counseling on the backside of the problems. And so by the time I married five years later, my wife and I were pretty prepared. And so we didn't have the the honeymoon in uh, dis disillusionment misery stage, not saying we didn't have some um, transitions, but for me, the biggest thing that happened in my life and really continues to happen today uh, as a stronger personality, we'll talk a lot about personalities at this seminar. We tend to see things out of our own eyes, especially those of us who are eagles or type A personalities. And what I'm discovering more and more is I tend to put myself in my wife's shoes rather than seeing how my wife sees. And if that's a game changer. I mean, that will change everything in your life. For example, uh, when we were married, uh, if birthdays, I'm a peacock, I have a big time, let's, let's have a big party. We'd have three, 400 people at our house from our church. Well, my wife, she's more of an introvert. She would just like for her and me to go out for a quiet meal. Well, so my tendency would have a big party for her and her tendency would have a small party for me. And <laughs> when we start working through those paradigms and these perspectives, it really can bring sad to relationships. We're not, we're not trying to be intentionally irritant to each other. It's just that we see things differently and we tend to judge others by what we would do in their situation rather than what they would do. Does that make sense? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, I, not without doing it or not doing a deep dive, but geez, we, we so often um, misconstrue Jesus um, sermon with judging and he and he's and i think that the moat in my brother's eyes and judging is saying hey we've got this external judgment and we will be judged with that same judgment but you know it's it's a good message to say hey how how am i looking at at things am i seeing things from that same perspective that i that i've got the the eyes on somebody else am i willing to step into their shoes yeah and that is a tremendous point because I found it the one child that I've had the most trouble getting along with. Again, I have a great relationship with all my kids, but there's one I found myself picking at more than the others. You want to guess which one it is? The one, the one that's, that's most, most like, like me. Yes. Yeah. So I would see my log in her speck, and yeah. I didn't, didn't cognitively know that for probably five or six years. She just has so much potential. I just saw such gifts that she wasn't pushing. And I found myself on her case and on her case until eventually the Lord really dealt with me about that and said, she's the most like you. And that's why you see these things in her life. And wow. Uh, so when we have those moments when the Holy Spirit enlightens our eyes, and again, chastening is a sort of sonship or daughters yeah. and the, the, the spiritual walk, whether it's in marriage or in homeschooling. I tell people that homeschooling is not so much about the education of the child, but the sanctification of the family. We're yeah. And the same thing happens with marriage. We start to see 
how unchrist like we are, and it causes uh, causes us to cry out for more of His grace. Yeah. That uh, I want to dive just a little bit more into that grace. So, I when I had that same realization, you know, it's like the same story with our oldest daughter. Um, and I was like, why is she so lazy? I hope she doesn't hear me, you know, say this. Because I, I was like, you know, she, she's got that drive. She's got that, that ability. And, and I didn't realize, too, that I, she was taking on my personality and my character and that root of anger that, that I had. Um, and, and you bring that up, and yet uh, you, you mentioned grace. So how is it that we... When, when we go five years, 10 years um, in this place where, you know, somebody else would say, boy, I, I you know, I just totally have messed my kids up. Yeah. How, how are you finding reassurance in your marriage, you know, to, to move on and the, the world so much sometimes wants us to be stuck in guilt. And today we've got this We've got this whole thing going on right now uh, about the oppressor and the oppressed, and we've got to feel guilty for who we are and, and that sort of thing. It's just such a, a miserable, lost state. So how do you, you know, what's the thing that's most assuring for you um, as you continue to grow in, in your marriage relationship? Well, I think what you said there is so very important because the destination is the journey. It's not reaching some point of you know, perfection or uh, nirvana. It is that we're changed by glory to glory. Uh, this is true in our marriage, it's true in parenting. And so many parents, I think, miss this reality because when you're with your kids 24 seven, it brings out some of the worst in you as a parent. But the kids, when they see us repenting, when they see us uh, trying to appropriate grace for areas of weakness in our life, that's authentic Christianity. And that's what captures our kids' hearts. And while we want messages to instruct us, to edify us, absolutely. But it's when parents live the Christian life in front of their kids, the good, the bad, and the ugly. I've had times when I've been before all my kids. I've set all 11 of them down with my wife, and I confessed a sin to them. I was crying. They were crying. And rather than them lacking respect for me, it causes them to draw near to me because humility breeds mercy. Uh, wow. Folks who never apologize, folks who never confess sin are prideful people. And prideful people have very little mercy. Mercy comes from when we're humble. And so when we parents, uh, as a couple, husband and wife, as mom and dad to our children, when we are humbled by life and respond biblically, it just brings an atmosphere of mercy and grace into our home and great things happen at that point. Yeah. Isn't that, that great. And, and like first John says, if, if we don't understand the great mercy of, of God brings you back to Jesus with the apostles, not understanding uh, the, uh, you know, the great gift bestowed on him, I think it was by Mary, you know, and, and he said, she's been forgiven much. And if we aren't willing to confess our sins, we, we, we remain children, but that relationship is, is broken. You know, it, 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 it needs to be restored with that confession and realization that God is, is gracious and, and merciful to us. Yeah. And Proverbs 14, four of my favorite verses, where there's no ox and the stable stays clean, but with much oxen comes much increase. Uh, so many people, and I think especially Christian homeschoolers, more 20 years ago than now, worry more about having a sterile appearance rather than life-producing messes. <laughs> messes produce real life. And so rather than trying to run from messes and definitely not having this hypocritical false air about us, that, that will provoke our kids to wrath as quickly as anything else. But when we are, are working through these messes by the grace of God, it just demonstrates, number one, we're fallen. Number two, we need a savior. And number three, we have that Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Yeah. Well, Kirk, I appreciate the, the few minutes. Any closing thoughts for folks planning on attending or thinking about attending? 
Yeah, I, I do. Every time I've done the same teaching, probably about 10 or 12 times, maybe more. But every time it's different. And like I said, I've had folks who've been there at least three times and say every time there's been something different because I really want to pray. And I do pray that God uses it. It's not something that I have scheduled. I really try to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit's work. And so it's like every different group, something different will come out. And I trust that's the Holy Spirit dealing with different people at their point of need. And so I would tell anyone, I'd love to have more engaged couples come. It will save them major problems uh, down the road. One of the first couples that I actually did pre-marriage counseling with, at the end of the eight weeks, I asked them for feedback to do it better. And he said, you're just too negative. He said, you're just (laughs) negative. I said, come and see me after your first year of marriage. Well, about 10 months later, he came back to me. He said, I want you to know if we had not had premarital counseling, we'd have been divorced. He said, we were not prepared. We had the wrong perspective. And that caused us to understand it's not the problems. That's the real problem. It's our response or reaction to those problems. And that's what this weekend will be about just learning how to respond biblically to living with a fallen mate as they live with their fallen mate, which is us. And so I think it'll be a fun time. It'll be an authentic time, a very, uh, very open time. I'll be very open with my mistakes, uh, things I wish I would have done better. And hopefully that'll be a blessing and encouragement to other people. Fantastic. Well, thanks for uh, spending some time with us tonight. Really appreciate it, Kurt. Hey, thanks so much. Look forward to being with you here in a couple of weeks. Okay. Bye-bye. Where is that? You're going to have to edit that out.